Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, on my YouTube channel. I am your host, the Mighty Bjorn, and today for you, got a new Community Steel video. I'm going to kick off today's episode with the T72 B3 from Excalibur 117. This tank weighs in at 38.2 tons, sorry, 29 tons, and it is armed with a 125 millimeter main gun with 212 millimeters of penetration. And it is obviously for the late war period, as this is the most modernized version of the T-72 out there. Now, armor-wise, on the frontal arc, the armor is actually rather superb for its time period. It's nice, round, and it's steeply angled wherever it is angled. Uh, but that being said, the armor on the side and the rear is absolutely horrid. Just absolutely miserable. As I actually get penetrated by a, a, a Sherman with a short-barreled 105 millimeter main gun that's only shooting high explosive armor piercing because that's all I loaded that vehicle with. But that being said, it's kind of anticipated that the like the lower glacius plate, the side armor, etc., would be miserable on this vehicle. That being said, the forward mobility is actually rather good, pretty agile in that regard as well. However, Going in reverse, this thing is absolutely horrible. Just like the actual real T-72, it's almost like they decided not to build the vehicle to be go able to go in reverse at all. Um, and Excalibur kind of followed that theme here with the actual, his version of the T-72 B3. That is actually really legit that the reverse gear is horrible. The next vehicle I have here today is Another one from Excalibur. This is his Tesla tank. This is actually a tank inspired by Command and Conquer Red Alert, I believe. And this weighs in at 28.26 tons. It is armed with his 75 twin 75 millimeter main guns with 110 millimeters of penetration. He did this for the late war as well. But honestly, for how it being a late war vehicle, it really doesn't have enough penetration for the type of vehicles that I think people would typically have loaded or even that I have loaded. It won't penetrate most of the vehicles out there. But it is still a rather cool tank and it does actually have a pretty fast reload. Armor's fairly mediocre. It works at times and fails at others. You know, it. It's. Uh, I would say it's more of a saving throw than something you should rely on. The mobility is actually rather awesome. Very fast, very agile. Almost like driving a sports car, realistically. As you can see here, it maneuvers very well. Now, the one thing I did find interesting and kind of curious of how he did it, mostly because I haven't really messed too much with the current updates, is the guns can actually traverse, elevate, or lower all the way around. So, 360 degree arc on his elevation, if you will. And the turret traverse speed is actually pretty good itself. It, he does have custom decals for it, but even though I loaded them in my Arma, they didn't load, but it's actual got red paint on it and stuff of that nature to make it look more fancy. The next vehicle I have here is from SS Panzer, and this is his VC, VZ100. And it is armed with a 130 millimeter main gun with 243 millimeters of penetration. It also has a 30 millimeter coaxial with 155 millimeters of penetration. It is for the late war period. Uh, mobility wise, I mean, this thing is a 175 ton behemoth. And honestly, the mobility is absolutely miserable. I, I don't even think it's worth the time uh, that being said, it does kind of look like an oversized, like, T-62, T-55 to me. You know, it's got that rounded Soviet turret shape to it. And it's also got a rounded cast-style hull. So, overall, I do like the design. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's really too heavy to really use in any of the missions. It's It sits really low to the ground, so it's actually really easy to get this thing stuck. I actually got it stuck multiple times. I even get it stuck here on what uh, on terrain that most tanks would cross. It's just because this thing is just so big, so heavy. It really can't gain a whole lot in the way of speed, although it can go at a pretty decent clip going downhill, but it is also a really heavy vehicle. 
Oh no, I don't think it's a bad design, or bad looking anyway, but design wise it's not the best. Alright, here we go. We got the Type 4 Cheeto from Dahu Chino. This weighs in at 30.5 tons, armed with a 75 millimeter main gun with 155 millimeters of penetration for the late war period. He made this specifically for the late war period, so I'm sure compared to maybe an earlier era version of the Cheeto he has, this thing's probably got some upgrades, probably particularly with the engine and the gun and the, the ammunition. Uh, the vehicle's not bad. I didn't feel it was bad gunnery-wise. The uh, gun depression is actually rather good on this thing. Mobility, I feel, is fairly mediocre. The armor was very average, but it does work. It holds up against going up against lighter tanks. The armor will struggle to protect you from some of the heavier vehicles that you will face off against in arm uh, in sprocket here, or at least what I have loaded in my sprocket. You know, vehicles like the Cane Tiger, it's, the armor's not going to hold up, but, you know, 88 millimeter long barrel gun, what armor does hold up, except for some of the heavier, more shaped tanks in the game. Moving on to the final victim today. This is from Vladislav. And this is his T-43 Skoda. Now, this is supposed to be a Romanian captured, recycled, reused Skoda. Weighs in at 22 tons, so it's actually fairly light for a medium tank. Although it is still in that medium tank range, it's just on the lighter end of that scale. It is armed with the 75mm main gun. Has 164 millimeters of penetration. And once again, this thing is for the late war period. It does all right against some of the medium tanks that I have loaded, but some of the heavier stuff, the gun just really isn't enough. Unless I hit the weak spots. Uh, kind of having some of the issue here as well with some of these vehicles I'm fighting off against. Mostly because of how well sloped the armor is. So it's actually pretty incredible how well just a little, how long uh, uh, just a bit of sloping will go for a little bit of armor. That being said, this is pretty good. The mobility is superb. Definitely really like the mobility of it. And overall, I actually like the look of it. It does look like a Skoda. So I'll give them credit for that. All in all, very good looking vehicle. Even though not all the decals properly loaded once again. Anyway, folks, I'm going to wrap up today's episode of Community Steel. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Thank you very much for tuning in and share this with your buddies. Anyway, have a wonderful day.